Hey beautiful people of the living God, all praises to the Most High. So we're going to talk about flattery and deceit. Alright, flattery and is a wicked thing because it could sway people away from what is right and doing what is right into walking in ways of evil. So we're going to talk about flattery and deceit and how it's being used a lot today to sway people from doing what is right and sway people into doing what is evil and to not be caught in this deception and to be aware of it. Doctrine and Covenants 10 and 29. Now behold, they have altered these words because Satan said unto them, he has deceived you. And thus he flattered them away to do iniquity to get thee to tempt the Lord thy God. So you can be flattered to do iniquities, to do evil, right? So we're going to go to the definition of flattery. Excessive and an insincere praise given especially to further one's own interests, all right? Now, Mo Messiah 6 and 6, For it came to pass that they did deceive many with their flattering words, who were in the church and did cause them to commit many sins. Therefore, it became expedient that those who committed sin that were in the church should be admonished by the church. Like, I hate flattery all the time. Even when people give me compliments, I, I ask God if it's sincere because I know people give compliments, you know, to gain opportunities off of you or just or the devil will send them in to get close to you as i told you before the devil never comes mean he always comes nice so he comes with flattery so anytime people compliment me or they flatter me i question it and i ask god if it's sincere or not and who these people are and why are they complimenting me is it sincere do they mean it from their heart because flattery is a wicked thing there's Flattery can even be used with with witchcraft. Flattery can be used with force. So we're going to even talk about the woman in Proverbs a little bit too. We're just going to go through the scriptures. And this is a teaching that you shouldn't be flattered by people's compliments. Even like that whole social media thing. The greatest thing for me is when I, I left social media like years ago. Like maybe 2018 I love yeah and this is the greatest like life has been the greatest thing since God I've let God work with me the way he wants to work with me the only thing I have is this this channel to teach you people and that's the only form of social media I have I don't have social media but anyways let's get back to flattery Alma 61 and 4 and it is those who have sought to take away the judgment seat from me that have been the cause of this great iniquity, for they have used great flattery and, the, you know, fake praise, fake love. And they have led away the hearts of many people, which will be the cause of sore affliction among us. They have withheld our provisions and have daunted our free men that they have not come on to you. 2 Nephi 28 and 22 to 23. And behold, others he flattered away and told them there is no hell. And he said unto them, I am no devil, for there is none. <laughs> and thus he whispered in their ears until he gasped, grasps them with his awful chains, from whence there is no deliverance. Yeah, they are grasped with death and hell, and death and hell and the devil, and all that have been seized therewith, must stand before the throne of God and be judged according to their works. So when people don't believe there's a God, they go about living their life any type of way because so, they don't think that they're going to be judged for it. So they have death awaiting them, the lake of fire, right? So they stand before the throne of God and being judged according to their works. From hence they must go into the place prepared for them, even a lake of fire and brimstone, which is endless torment. Psalms 12 and 2. 
how does God feel about this flattery thing? Because he says he's going to cut out all flattering tongues, all flattering lips. We're going to get all flattering lips he's going to cut off. So in Psalms 12 and 2 to 12 and 13, they speak vanity, every one to his neighbor, with flattering lips and with a double heart do they speak. So when someone is flattering you, they're speaking to you with a double heart. They're, they're not being genuine and sincere to you. They have a ulterior motive against you while they're doing that. It's insincere praise. That's why God says, The Lord shall cut off all flattering lips and the tongue that speaks proud things. A lying tongue hates those that are afflicted by it, and a flattering mouth works ruin. So this, God's telling you, a flattering mouth, it works ruin. So these things, like, He's going to cut off flattering lips. So you know when people are trying to flatter you, they're going to ruin you. Now in Proverbs 7 and 21, it talks about with her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. With the flattering of her lips, she forced him. Now, flattery, you can be forced with flattering words to do something against your own will. But in Proverbs, a lot was going on in there was witchcraft, there was sorcery going on. Flattery is also a form of divination. With the flattering of her lips, she forced him. Flattery can cause you to be forced. But this this Proverbs chapter 7 woman, there's so much evil that was going on. You should really fast and pray and make God explain that story for you, to you. Job 32 and 22, for I know not to give flattering titles, praise of men, flattering men. Don't give people flattering titles. Don't give yourself flattering titles. In so doing, my maker would soon take me away. When you give people flattering titles, when you make yourself a flattering title, what, what? your maker will take you away soon. Job 32 and 22, 3 Nephi 1 and 29. And there was also a cause of much sorrow among the Lamanites. For behold, they had many children who did grow up and begin to wax strong in years, that they became for themselves and were led away by some who were Zom, Zoramites by their lyings and their flattering words to join those Gadotin robbers. So why were people led away? By lyings, lyings a form of deceit, and flattering words. Flattery is dangerous. Doctrine and covenants, 3 and 6. And behold, how oft you have transgressed the commandments and the laws of God, and have gone on in the persuasions of men. What are persuasions of men? Flattery, deceit, lies. For behold, you shall not have feared man more than God. Although men set at naught the counsels of God, remember God is, um, Proverbs 8 and 14, counsel is mine, sound wisdom, I am understanding. It tells you to get counsel from God. But people fear man more than they fear God, so they don't want to get the counsel from God. They rather get it from man. For behold, you should have n not feared man more than God. Although men set at naught the counsels of God, and despise his words, yet you should have been faithful, and he would have extended his arm and supported you against all the fiery darts of the adversary. That's when you stand steadfast in the Lord and you're faithful and you're loyal, despite all the things the enemy throws at you and people, despite what they say, though, despite what they do, you're steadfast and you're strong. God will extend his arm and support you against all the fiery darts of the adversary. And he would have been with you in every time of trouble.